What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 45 of Onshape. Now, what we're going to do specifically is we're going to throw in our follower rods along with getting them to constrain correctly. Now, if you've been following my videos so far, we're at a point where all of our cams are made with a single side, or what Onshape calls is a single face. So, what we got here is all of our tricky ones, like the snail and the heart and so forth, we have modified them in such a way to where the face of them on the outside is one continuous face. The ones that don't give us a problem are the pair cam, and that's because this face and this face meet at a perfect 180 degrees because it's that tangent we used. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and just use these follow rods as we need. If the rounded follower rod does not use, does not work when we use it. We can try the pointed one. And I'm going to show you why the pointed one won't work later when we do the heart cam. Uh, so you're fast forward in the video if you want specifically on that one. And then I believe I'm going to make a small mistake in the snail and show you how I edited it to make it work. But the first four should actually be pretty easy. All we need to do is we need to work on our slider constraints. I'm going to slider mate. We're going to use this edge right here is going to slide through this hole. Okay, now you don't need to have them aligned up perfectly. You should make sure, is it going the direction I need it to go? So if I click play here, yes, it's sliding the correct direction. We're looking good. If in the instance you get your primary axis the wrong direction, uh, like that the rounded point is going up, we want it going down. Just flip your primary axis, and then you're good. Now, since these aren't fully constrained, I can I still can move it. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do a slider, uh, but we need to have other follower rods as well. So I'm going to right click and copy follower rod, and then we can just paste it when we need it. So I'm going to paste it again. Two, three, four and five okay because i know i'm going to need five of them because we are only going to use the pointed one on the heart cam for today okay let's now get the rest of our sliders in so slider mate we can even do the center of this follower through that hole Hit check mark center through center green check mark center through center Green check mark. We're going to skip a hole for the heart. There we go. And I guess I did do one too many, didn't I? So we can just click on that, hit delete, and it's gone. And one more last slider, and that's going to be the center of that is going to go through that hole. Okay. Now, I haven't put the feet on, and that's because we're actually going to mate the bottom of our follower rods to these cams right here, and the feet is just there for aesthetics only. Okay, so under constraint, we're gonna click on tangent mate. So tangent mate allows two faces or two edges to be touching tangentially to each other. So I'm gonna click on this rounded face right here, and then click on that face right there. Some points, it does like to go through the cam. We don't like that. So we're gonna flip our primary axis, and it fixes it for us perfectly. If any point parts get in your way, you're welcome to drag them out of the way if you can. If they really get in your way, like this side wall, you can actually click on the side wall here, right click and hit hide. Now it doesn't delete it, but allows you to not get in the way. Okay, tangent mate. This edge right here to that face right there. Remember if it's going through it, we flip it. Hit the green check mark. And we're gonna keep on going. Tangent mate, that face. Now, since the pair cam works, all right, it's gonna read that outside face as one continuous face. And we're looking good. Hit the green check mark, and there we go. Alrighty. Tangent mate, edge here, face there. It's going through. Looks like it, so I'm gonna flip the primary axis. We're good to go. Now the problem you get with 
the rounded edge on the heart cam is that if we had a rounded edge, it would actually read two points. And then on shape has kind of a, a moment because it doesn't know what to do. There's two points of contact. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna do tangent made again, but instead it is going to be, oh, let me zoom out just a little bit. It's gonna be just this point and Oh, I think I clicked on something wrong there. There we go. Let's just go all the way back. This vertex here, this point is going to be tangentially touching the face of our heart cam. And we're looking good. Now, if at any point you want to make sure you're doing things correctly, you're welcome to right click Revolute, hit animate, and give it a try. So if I've done things correctly, we're not going to get any error codes and our automata works as expected. Okay, but let me go back and I'm gonna change my snail cam. So I'm gonna find my snail cam, find the sketch that I made it from, and I am going to throw in a constraint. Let's, make, let's mess this up. So let's drag this down just a little bit. So what if I didn't make a very good snail cam? What if it's got a little bit too much of a waviness to it and how this cuts back? So let's go back to my assembly. And let's try this out. Let's try to do this out with a bad cam. So we're gonna do tangent again. And we're gonna do this face with this face. Now you might be thinking, hey, it read it, we're looking good. However, when we go to animate, we hit loop, we hit play, we feel confident, we get an error code. Some steps were computed, but there was an error. And we see that during this animation, the moment it repeats is the moment it failed. And that's because my cam is trying to do stuff that doesn't make sense. So you go one of two directions. You can either fix the cam or you can use a pointed follower rather than a rounded one. So I found one of those two ways, usually you'll get there uh -huh, and if correct in one of those two methods. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, make my cam all nice and pretty again. Oh, I need to go back to the cams though. Cams, let's make my snail cam nice and pretty again. We see that Hopefully, since this is a straighter edge, we shouldn't run into any problems. So let's try it out. I don't even know if it's gonna work. All right, so I'm gonna go back down here. Let's go to my last tangent. That looks okay. All right, and let's try it out. Oh, it looks like something's going wrong. So let's flip the primary axis there and see what kind of problems we run into now. Right click animate, hit play. Do we still run into an error code? We do. And that's because my vertex, oh, that, that constraint just doesn't even look right at all to begin with. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna click on it, delete it, and we're gonna try it again. So, tangent, this face to this face. Flip my primary axes, it's sitting on top like the rest of them have, so now we're looking better. So when I go to right click Revolute now, and there we go, huzzah! We finally made a fully working automata box with all of our parts. However, we're missing one aesthetic detail, and that is this little foot here. So let's go ahead and put our feet on. All right, we're going to copy this and we're gonna need six of them. So I'm gonna put three out there. Copy three items, paste three items. There we go. All right, and last but surely not least, how are we gonna fasten these together? We're gonna fasten this face to this circle right here. 
And what that does is it puts the foot on the way it's supposed to be, but since it's not part of the constraint, our animation still works. They are going to go through each other just a little bit, but the foot is there just for aesthetic reasons only. When you make your real automata, you will be putting feet on the uh, bottom of your dowel rods, um, but in order to make on shape work, this is the best method I've found. And I'm willing to bet that there's probably going to be somebody who has a better method here soon, if not already. But what I found through probably eight hours, uh, give or take, of just failing and failing and failing, this is the best method I have of making my atom to work. See, it's going through there a little bit, and that's okay. At least for what I'm going to call okay. There we go. Alrighty, we got our feet on. Everything's looking good. Show all. We're going to hide all connectors and mates, though. And then finally, but surely not least, let's hide all those mates. Hide all mates. Hide all mate connectors. Oh, try that again. There we go. Go to our isometric view and Revolute. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have officially made an automata box with six different cans, five of them which work, two of them which were a pain, uh, and then uh, we are done. Okay? If you have any questions, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. I'll help them out as I can. But like always, these videos have been tons of fun, so please, 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 if you need something to help, uh, feel free to reach out, and I'd love to make videos over certain things. Uh, at this point, I'm going to get a little creative with my videos in the instance of maybe doing things that aren't in other classes, but definitely some things that would be some cool projects to do. So if you have some cool project ideas, feel free to just shoot them out there, and I'd love to get them a try as well. Okay, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.